Hi guys, and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve, and today we're going to be reviewing my first Proxima watch, the PX1697. I purchased this watch with a decent discount from the Proxima official store on AliExpress. Even though I got a little bit of a discount, you guys know by now that it's not going to sway my review one way or the other. I mean, if by the end of this review you're finding yourself wanting to pick one of these up, I really would appreciate it if you use the affiliate links down below in the description. That really helps out the channel. You guys don't pay any extra, but, but this channel does benefit a little bit from the small commission earned. The current retail price for this watch is $259, US and that's before any discounts or coupons. Currently, I'm seeing a $15 off coupon, so... Be sure to snip that before you purchase it. I have also seen Proxima participate in some of the bigger sales, so uh, you have those to look forward to as well. Currently, the watch is available in two different colorways that you can see here. You kind of have this really cool enamel white dial, which is what we're reviewing today, and then the snowflake blue dial. I have a feeling they're going to be uh, adding quite a few more options. I, I do believe this is going to be a pretty good selling watch. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what other colors they come up with. The watch case, bracelet, and clasp is made of 316L stainless steel. has a sapphire crystal, ceramic bezel insert, screw-down crown, screw-down case back, 200 meters of claimed water resistance, and it's powered by the PT5000 automatic movement, or you can upgrade for about $130 to the Swiss Solita SW200. So like I said, this is my first Proxima. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about the brand and what they bring to the table. If I was more into the Seiko cases and stuff, um, I'd probably have a, at least a couple by now. Uh, but seeing as this is my first Proxima, I had a slight idea of what it was going to be like, uh, but I just didn't know it was going to be this good. Um, it's not perfect. It's definitely not perfect. Um, so I say we get right into this review. Before we do, doing a quick wrist check today. Just got this one in uh, just the other day. Caddison sent this one over for a review, and this will be on the channel very soon. All right, let's get into the dimensions. We've got a bezel diameter of 39.4, thickness of 11.7, 20 millimeter lug width. We've got a lug tip to lug tip of 45.5, and because it has female end links, that is the overall length, and sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with two and a half links removed. It weighs 124 grams. So, I mean, this thing is just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I, I'm not really sure what else to say. The size, for me, is absolutely perfect. 39 and a half at the bezel. You can see the bezel does overhang the case a little bit, so the case itself is 39 millimeters. Um, just over 11 and a half thick, and that's with that crystal on it. I mean, it looks super slim. You can see there, you got nice turn down to the lugs. You got a beautiful case, which we'll talk about in just a second. I mean, this thing is... Again, I think it's just perfect. Absolutely perfect. I love the way that it wears. So I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my 7.5 inch wrist. And as you can see, it wears great. Uh, just a perfect size for me, in my opinion. I love these 39 millimeter cases. They wear great. You can see here, you got a nice undercut on the bottom side of the lugs there. And, I mean, it just makes it a very comfortable case. It hugs the wrist beautifully, as you can see right there. Uh, it's just great. Uh, I've got no issues with the way this thing wears. Very comfortable, very lightweight, um, lot to play off the bezel there, and it just looks good. Looks really good. And here we are in some direct sunlight, and as you can see, perfectly legible. Still looks very good. i got no issues with that. you got some blue AR coating on the crystal, and it does a good job of keeping the dial nice and clear. And yeah, I think it just looks great. Looks really, really good. But it's going to look even better on some straps, so let's go throw it on right now. And here we are on a black vintage leather strap. This one will be linked down below. I think that looks all right. Not my favorite, but uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I think the, the cream stitching kind of throws it off a little bit, but that's what a you know simple black leather strap will look on it. Looks pretty good, though. And here we are on a suede strap. One of my favorites for winter and fall. Uh, link down below. And yeah, that looks really good. I always like these kind of white dials with that, that brown suede looks great and here we are on a green canvas strap from Riche, and i think that looks pretty good uh, definitely brings out that kind of creamy tone to those dial indices the lumen the, the lumen the indices on the dial um, but yeah i do think that looks pretty good what do you guys think about that and here we are on a nice bright blue rubber strap really cheap strap from aliexpress but i will leave the link down below um, but yeah, that looks really cool. Very fun color. 
and uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a popular one during the summertime, swimming in the pools and the oceans, and that's kind of going to be my go-to, I think. I think it looks great. What do you guys think about that? And here we are on a bright orange purlon strap, again, from AliExpress. The link will be down below. There's one layer underneath the watch there. It still sits really, really good. Just thought I'd throw some more color at it, because I think it's a, kind of a strap monster. You know, it's a, it's a monochrome dial. There's no, no accent colors on it or anything, so... You can throw any color at this and it's going to look good. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the orange pearl line. I think that looks good. We got one last strap though. And lastly, here we are on just a black seatbelt NATO. That looks great. Two layers underneath the watch there. And it still wears fantastic. Uh, this setup is super comfortable, lightweight. I think that looks awesome. Just love the black with the white dial. I think, it, yeah, it just looks good. It looks really, really good. All right, let's go back inside and we'll get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about this case. So this case is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, really nice finishing mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. So you can see on the tops of the lugs here, you've got a nice vertical brushing, very, very satinized. I mean, it's super fine brushing. And then on the side here, you've got a horizontal brushing on this surface here. Really, again, really nicely done. You've got a nice polished chamfer that separates the two. Very crisp, clean. Uh, it just looks great. It looks really, really good. And then on the bottom side of this thing, you've got a polished surface here. So uh, this definitely kind of mimics that Christopher Ward case, and they did a really good job. Not quite as good as the Trident Pro 600 I, I recently recently reviewed, but um, I mean, it's pretty darn close. I, I definitely say it's like 90% of that. Uh, really nice, nicely done. The polishing is done very well. Uh, the brushing that they use is perfect in my opinion. Flipping it over to the crown side here, you have an unsigned polished crown. Nice and big crown, six and a half millimeters on that crown, so plenty grippy. There's no crown guards to get in the way, which I personally love. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just done really nicely. I'm not really sure what else to say. It's, it's, it's very good. The case is excellent on this thing. So flipping it over to the case back here, you can see simple screw down case back. Nice notches to get a tool in there if you ever need to. Um, cool little manta rays or stingrays there, which look really cool. Uh, it does say limited edition here, so I'm not sure if this is actually going to be limited edition. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. I'm very happy that I got one if it is limited edition, but yeah, really cool design on the case back. Everything is nice and smooth. No issues there. Bottom edge of the case, nicely smooth. Um, it's a very comfortable watch to wear. You can see you've got some uh, vertical brushing on the bottom of the lugs here. It's it's done really well. Very happy with the case on this thing. And let's talk about the bezel on this thing. So the bezel is really nicely done. It's a ceramic bezel insert, solid black, white markings, very minimal markings. It doesn't have the 15-minute uh, ticks like normal. Um, I like it. It's, it's pretty minimal, like I said, but I think it does look really, really good. The bezel itself, it's stainless steel. Really nicely finished, though. I mean, getting real closer. It looks great. Coin edge bezel. Nice and sharp, polished. Uh, even though it's so like such a low profile there, I've had zero problems with getting grip on this thing. It's nice and grippy. It's a 120 click unidirectional. There's, I mean, just maybe uh, I don't even want to say there's there's back play. It's a very solid bezel, very solid bezel. The clicks, they're a little bit uh, lighter than I would like, but I think that's kind of what you're going to have to expect with a bezel like this. It's a pretty thin bezel. Um, so it just doesn't have that, like, it doesn't have the density um, or, I guess, the mass to, to produce really solid clicks. But it's not bad by any means. It's very good. Um, yeah, I've got no problems with that. Nice and loud. Easy to grip. I mean, the resistance is perfect. The alignment is spot on here. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. It's kind of hard to show. Uh, but it is, I mean, it kind of looks off there, but it's definitely spot on. Um, yeah, it, it looks great. Uh, I've got no issues with it. All the markings are loom filled with BGW9 as well. We'll get to the loom shot in a little bit. But yeah, I think the bezel, it looks good. It feels good. It works good. It sounds good. Uh, I've got no issues with it. All right, let's talk about the crystal. A little sapphire test there. Positive for sapphire. And it is a beautiful sapphire crystal box dome as you can see there it looks great it looks really really good nice and clear 
tons of blue anti-reflective coating as you can see right there that, that tint on the glass there it's very blue uh, but it looks great it looks absolutely great uh, keeps the dial nice and clear and it looks fantastic i love the profile of it um yeah i'm not really sure what to tell you it, it's a good crystal it's a really good crystal yeah, so let's get close and we'll talk about the dial on this thing and the dial is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous it's a enamel white dial uh, hopefully you guys can see it but it is enamel white so glossy white it looks fantastic you have a simple printed minute track around the outside in black nicely done you have applied indices at all the hour markers you have this truncated one at the six o'clock for the six o'clock date so really happy with that you can see the date is just a little bit off i haven't really noticed it until um just right before this review um, i think i was in the middle of a date change and i don't know something happened um, but yeah it, it is just a little bit off now i don't expect years to be off uh, the font that they chose for this date um, it's a little odd uh, I've, I've noticed some people commenting about that um, it hasn't really bothered me too much uh, i'm going to show you guys make sure i'm not in the danger zone okay uh, so here's the dates here Oops. these are the fonts that they used they're a little unusual um, they're not they don't bother me too much though um, but it's just something that I have noticed um, yeah I mean it is what it is I mean you're not gonna be able to change that out so um, yeah I don't again I don't mind it uh, the fonts that they use on this thing in general are a little unusual you know the proxima logo up here at the 12 o'clock it's pretty cool i like that i like that font the automatic down here again that's also pretty cool i like it it's unusual um you can get this with the uh the unidive logo which is a unicorn like an angry unicorn uh, i opted for just the proxima logo uh, and i think it looks really good the indices on this thing are applied very nicely um I've got no problems with them. Nice and big and bold. They, they don't blend into the dial at all, which I was a little bit worried about. Um, but yeah, I think they look really good. You kind of have these, not quite triangles, at the uh, at the 3 and 9 o'clock. Big triangle at 12 o'clock. And I think they all look really good. They are filled with BGW9, as are the hands. You, you can see here the loom color. There is a mismatch, uh, no doubt about it. The, the dial is kind of like a creamy, and then the hands are a pure white. I, I'm not sure why they do this. Um, hopefully it's not on purpose and it's just something that they they have to tweak and eventually they'll they'll get it right but um, again it hasn't really bothered me I, I do wish they were all just pure white or kind of that creamy color um, but it is what it is um, but the handset on this thing is excellent very nicely done as you can see here you have that capped seconds hand which looks fantastic absolutely fantastic really nice length on the second hand really nice length on the minute hand as well hour hand seems good as well now, I've got no problems with them. The handset itself, they're nicely chamfered and faceted. Uh, you've got this kind of brushed finish in the middle of each hand, so they stick out quite nicely. Uh, they don't ever disappear, which I was a little worried about. They look good. They're a good length. And again, they're filled with BGW9. So now I'm going to pop up the loom shot. And here you can see it against a couple other watches in the collection. And it holds its own, for sure. The, uh, the bezel does fade a little bit faster than the dial does. Uh, and I think the hands also fade a little bit faster than the dial does, but overall, it's still really good loom. It lasts all night long. I have no problems reading it in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, it's a good application of loom. Very happy with the loom on this thing. All right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. So the movement in this is the PT5000, uh, 28,800 beats per hour. It hacks, hand winds, it does everything you need it to do. I've had no issues with this one. They actually sent me QC videos beforehand, and it was running at... Uh, I believe minus one second a day. Um, as you can see here on my time grapher, it's running, that was in the dial up position, so plus seven seconds, I think that's what it said. Um, and in general, uh, this thing's been running pretty much spot on. Um, I had it on wrist for about a week straight and it gained two seconds over that week. So uh, very happy with this. And, and it's nice to know that they are regulating these movements. Uh, and they're also sending really good quality control pictures with it. So um, I got a good view of the watch before they even sent it out. So really happy with that customer service. That's that's really nice. Um, but yeah, this movement, it, it runs great. It's operated by this 3 o'clock screw down crown, unsigned. I do wish they would have signed this with maybe with that Unidive, that Unicorn logo. Something. They need to put something on that. Um, but yeah, I think the screw in, screw out action is really nice. Um, the the overall feel of the crown i mean it's nice and solid 
Um, it's great. The hand winding, it's your typical PT5000, pretty stiff hand winding, but it feels good. Um, you pull it out to the third position, and that's where you set your time. Again, everything works as it should with the PT5000. I have never had an issue with the PT5000. They've all been great for me. Um, so yeah, I think we're kind of over that hump where you can get a bad one um, fairly often. So um, nice to see that you know Proxima is using good movements. Uh, hopefully they're doing what they can to eliminate or minimize any of the issues that the PT5000 usually gives us in the past. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's all I can really comment on that. Um, but back to the actual watch, the screw in action on this is very nice. Um, they're using those kind of spring loaded crowns. You can see there, see how it kind of springs in. So when you are screwing this in, you're not winding the movement. So it's just buttery smooth. It feels great. Um, and these, this crown is excellent. Six and a half millimeters, nice and grippy. I've got no issues with the crown, no issues with the movement. It's been great for me. All right, so let's talk about the bracelet in this thing. And the bracelet is really good. It's 20 millimeters, and then it tapers down to 16 millimeters at the clasp. It is really nicely brushed on the top surface here. As you can see there, really nicely brushed. Nice tight tolerances in there. It's a little bit of flex, but I mean, it's really good. Brushed on the sides here, screw pins for adjusting. So you can see right here, it has a half link. Um, so you got two half links with the bracelet, which is awesome. Uh, you've got four micro adjust in the clasp. You're going to be able to get a really good fitment. I do, again, wish they would brand this clasp. You know, even just the Proxima logo there or the Proxima text would be cool. Um, but otherwise, it's a nice clasp. It's brushed on the top, brushed on the sides. Nice polished chamfer around the sides here. It kind of reminds me of San Martin's uh, two-button pusher one. Not quite as refined on these buttons. They're a little sharper than the San Martin. But, I mean, it's it's not sharp. It's just they're sharper than the San Martin one. Um, nice action, though. I have no problems with that. It does have the Proxima and Arunian uh, logos inside there. Again, nicely done. No issues with that. There's no on-the-fly adjustment or anything, which is a little bit of a bummer, but I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, you've got female end links. The end link fitment is absolutely just rock solid. And you can see here it follows the lines of the case just perfectly. Um, yeah, really, really happy with that. And one other thing that I think is awesome, which... Um, it's not on this one. I got this. Apparently, I bought this a little too early, but they are now shipping these with quick release spring bars in the bracelet. That's amazing. I've contacted um, Proxima and hopefully I can get some sent to me because that would be a game changer for me personally. You guys know I love my straps. So, quick release spring bars on the bracelet is amazing. Hopefully, they can send them to me. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a big selling point to me. Someone in the comments did want me to talk about the spring bars in these watches. Um, especially in dive watches, he said. So I, I forget who you are, but this is for you. The spring bars in this are excellent. Uh, 1.8 millimeter, uh, nice tight fitment, nice solid action. They come in and come out really easy. Um, no problems with that. They're not the flimsy spring bars or anything like that. So very happy with the spring bars on this thing. And in general, this bracelet is excellent. I did have um, a squeaky link here, I just right in, right in the end links here. I did have a squeaky link. What I did was just added a little dab of oil here that I used to do a hydro mod. Um, little dab of oil on this thing, moved it around a little bit, and it's been fine ever since then. Um, and yeah, it's been great. The The bracelet on this thing is very nice. This bottom edge may be a little bit sharp, but uh, I've definitely seen worse and felt worse. Uh, but it's nice and fluid, nice and comfortable. I love the taper. Uh, it looks great. Um, everything functioned as it should. I removed two and a half links from my seven inch wrist and there's plenty of links left to remove. So you should have no issues getting a good fitment on this thing. The bracelet is good. Uh, that's all I can say. It, it's a good bracelet. So there you go, guys. That is the Proxima PX1697, a new release from Proxima. Uh, hopefully they will be releasing some other colors. Um, but I mean, this thing, uh, man, it is just for me. Uh, it's exactly what I was looking for. So I was one good deal away from buying a Christopher Ward Trident 300, the new one that they released. Uh, if I found one for like 900 bucks, I was going to buy it. Uh, and then I saw this thing pop up and I just wanted to give it a shot. It actually fixed one of the issues I had with the, or a couple issues that I had with the Christopher Ward. Uh, and that was the crown guards. I'm not a big fan of the crown guards that they use. And also the handset. I'm always kind of iffy on the handset. So they fixed the handset for me. They got rid of the crown guards. Uh, obviously, the quality isn't quite there, but I mean, it's pretty darn close and it costs $250. Uh, it was kind of a no-brainer for me, uh, especially with this channel. Um, 
yeah, bringing you guys new releases. And yeah, I, I'm super happy I did. I, my desire for that Christopher Ward is still there. Um, but I think this, uh, this will definitely hold me over until those come down in price a little bit. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's an excellent, excellent watch. Very happy with it. So if you guys are interested in this, again, I'm going to leave the link down below. It is an affiliate link. Thank you guys so much for using my affiliate links. Thank you guys so much for showing so much interest in this piece. I actually bumped it up the line because so many people were interested in this watch. And uh, hopefully you guys are appreciating this one. It's a really good watch, guys. It is very, very, very good. I can't wait to see them release this in other colors. Um, yeah, it's going to be a big hit for them, I think. Uh, so I think that's about it for me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.